Hey everybody, it's Stephanie from Apex Languages with another Words of the Week. Today's words were inspired by nature, sort of. I was out walking on one of the greenways in our, our state parks and I came upon this sign. It says, don't leave trash in your wake. I thought it was a very cute play on words, but my husband didn't know what it meant and I bet you're not entirely sure either. So let's learn a little bit about the little word, wake. Now, those of you who live in Raleigh and the surrounding areas know that those are part of Wake County. So that's part of the puzzle. But wake is found in a lot of different contexts, some of which you may not be aware of. Let's start as always though, by pronouncing the word. So repeat after me, wake, wake, wake. That one wasn't too hard, right? What part of speech is it? Well, it can be either a verb or a noun, or I guess in the case of Wake County, it's kind of an adjective, right? But uh, generally verb and noun. It has roots, there, there, it's, it's a very old English word. And Wake actually has two different, um, it's two different words that combined into one. Okay, um, you know, so they're homophones. The the first word, so that what that means is that it they're both wake, but they have different origins, and because of those different origins, they have a variety of different meanings. The older word is Proto-Germanic. It's been basically in the language forever, and that came from um, wak, which is lively. Okay, full of full of life. The Vikings had a similar word um, that, well, it didn't look similar at the beginning, but it has adapted throughout English to look the same as the other Germanic root. So we uh, have Volk, which was hole in the ice from Old Norse. So like I said before, we've got a couple of different meanings. We've got a big variety and that is in part because of the different origins of these words. Let's start with the, the most common version of this, the verb, wake. Uh, it is an irregular verb, again, because it's just so old. Okay, I wake, I woke in the past tense, and I was woken, I have woken. Now this means to rouse from sleep or other an active state. By rouse, I mean to make someone not sleep anymore, to shake them out of bed in the morning, right? Um, rouse, rouse is a nice word for shaking someone. That dog's barking wakes the entire neighborhood every night. Okay, so you could just say wake like that. I hate it when my kids wake me early on a Saturday. That's the worst. Now, most of the time we actually say, I hate it when my kids wake me up early on a Saturday. This is important. Most of the time we use wake with the preposition up. Okay, you wake up. You wake someone up. Okay, and, and you can see that uh, in the sentences that I've used so far and with the definition that I have, the, the base root of wake is waking other people. So you wake the neighbors, you wake your parents, you wake them up. Okay, but if you wanna talk about yourself, there's a couple of different ways to do that. I hate it when my kids wake me up early on a Saturday because I wake myself early the rest of the week. Or I wake myself up early the rest of the week. Again, the up variation is more common, but not 100% necessary. You could also say, I wake up, right? That That's more likely than I wake myself up. Obviously, I wake up, right? So most of the time, when do you wake up? The verb is a, a, a at its root about waking other people up, but you can also say, I wake up. But I wake early, uh, it's less common. If you say, I wake myself, 
that's more likely. If you just say, I wake early, I, I wake at three in the morning, mm, it's a little, um, it's not great. If you just want a one word fix, you're actually more likely to use the related word, I awake at, did I say three in the morning before? <laughs> How about six? Let's say six in the morning. Um, I, I prefer waking up at 11 in the morning, but um, let's say I awake at six, okay? Um, awake, just like wake, uh, is irregular. It follows the same pattern. Um, and so you can see here the past tense. I awake in the present it isn't as common, but when you're talking about the past, I awoke to the sound of my alarm clock. Uh, I, I was I was awoken by the sound of my alarm clock. So you can see um, how it's following that pattern. Remember, they are irregular. So again, wake, woke, woken. One more time, just repeat with me. Wake, woke, woken. Now for the noun, wake. Well, first one that comes to mind unfortunately, is a watch or vigil kept over the body of someone who has recently died or from other, uh, some other solemn or ceremonial purpose, okay? So this comes uh, from hundreds of years back, the medieval ages, the Renaissance. People had a bad habit of burying their loved ones when they weren't really dead. And so you would have someone who was like in a coma state, they were unconscious and people assumed because they didn't know better that they were dead. And so they would put them in the ground that the people would wake up buried alive and they would die because of that. Okay, this was a really big problem for a long time. Uh, sometimes in the cemeteries, they put little bells as, uh, to make sure maybe if you woke up, you could ring a bell and get some help. Um, but the easiest solution was to hold a wake. And the wake was uh, you would keep the body for a couple of days, you know, so don't bury it right away. Keep it around, have a party to celebrate their life or at least reckon maybe not a party party but you know have a gathering of all the family and you are watching them to make sure that they do not wake up right that's where the the word comes from um this was particularly uh common uh, it was an irish tradition um the, the the that's the most common we there's still wakes today okay before someone's buried there's traditionally a wake uh, it might also be called a memorial service. Um, so you go and you meet the family and you say, you know, I'm sorry for your loss, my condolences. Uh, and then later, the, the closer, closer family members uh, will have the actual funeral. Okay, so we still have this today. So a wake will be held in honor of Jane Doe, who passed away December 31st. Okay. So that's a, a ceremony. So if you ever see that, okay, that's uh, someone has died. Now, those are the two definitions that have to do with being lively. Because if you're awake, you're moving around, you look like you're alive. If you're asleep, we're not sure and we might bury you, okay? Um, the, the, the next definition here is our Viking one, which had to do with a hole in the ice. It has to do with water. It's developed. It's not about ice anymore, but it does have to do with water. Waves caused by the passing of a ship, okay, etc. Any sort of boat, even a person in the water, right? When you move through the water, you create waves, and and there's a path of, of waves, the water that was displaced, the water that was moved. So here in my sentence, the still clear water was suddenly churned up in the wake of our speedboat. So those are the waves. Now over time, these physical, literal waves, water, gave way to a more metaphorical meaning. And today, wake can be used 
uh, to talk about things that are not real. You know, things, the, the after effects of something else. What happened because something else uh, created waves, all right? And it led ultimately to an idiom in the wake of. Okay, it's a prepositional idiom because it starts with in, in the wake of. So it means following as a result of, right? So the boat passes and after that, following that, the waves uh, are created as a result. And so it has both, you know, these two meanings of it's something that happens afterwards, but especially because of something else. In the wake of the tidal wave, hundreds lost their homes. The politician lost all credibility in the wake of the scandal. You can see the second example is even, even less physical than the tidal wave, but they're both disasters. This tends to be used, the wake of something, uh, you know, wake of something big, or it's caused by something big and usually bad. You know, you wouldn't say, in the wake of my birthday, I ordered cake. Bum, bum, bum. That's too negative, right? And it's not really important, but these are all major disasters. Maybe not the, for us so much when the politician gets caught, but it is for him, it changes his life. Okay, so they're big and generally negative. Okay, here's one more sentence for you, very close to home. In the wake of COVID-19, everything has changed. This is something that you are very likely to see in the newspaper or on the news, you know, on, on, on the TV. So I thought, you know, for, for that reason as well, as just my, my nature walks, I, I figured it was a very good word to introduce to make sure you understand and you hear in the wake of. It means there was a disaster and because of that disaster, yada 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 okay something something changed something happened people were not happy all right so you know keep an eye out for this i'm sure it's out there i hate to leave you on such a sour note so let's end on the lighter side with my sign again don't leave trash in your wake if you haven't figured it out yet let me help walk you through it don't leave trash in your wake, okay? Don't leave it following you. It should not be uh, behind you. It should not be there as a result of you. You, in this case, are the natural disaster, all right? Uh, you are big and scary uh, and dangerous to all the little animals that depend on the, the nice park, right? So that's the idea there. Don't leave trash in your wake. Pick it up, take it with you. At the same time, it has a double meaning because again, we live in Wake County. So don't leave trash in Wake County. It's your county, so it's your wake. Uh, the, the guy's winking, okay, right there to remind you it's supposed to be funny. So uh, there's a little bit of play on words for you. Don't leave trash pick up behind yourself and take care of your community and get lots of practice with your English. Today's assignment, write at least three different sentences using wake at least three different ways. I've given you lots of different ways to use it. Experiment. Obviously, I think most of us are, are very comfortable with the idea of wake up. Okay, but you would be less likely to have seen some of these other definitions, or you might have seen them and not understood them. So practice, play around, make your own sign, okay? And, and again, post them in the comments or send me an email. I'm always there to help if you have questions. I'll leave you to it then. Thank you as always for watching. There's more videos available at apexlanguages.com. Have a wonderful, safe, healthy day.